we are now in section three of the software asset management certification training. Section three has two parts. We will begin with part one. Section three is about going deeper into the SAM principles. In part one, we are going to cover the ISO standards, uh, the three process tiers in SAM, and then some general topics such as processes, critical success factors, KPIs, the key performance indicators that is, and the importance of change and organization change management, and the concept of policies. And particularly, we'll look a little bit into how policies apply in software asset management. In part two, we'll be covering the various roles in SAM and the, the concept of the business case. And we will delve into a lot of detail around the business case or the justification for a SAM program. In line with what I just mentioned, the learning objectives in this lesson or section three are the following, describing the alignment of the ISO 19770, the SAM standard, maturity assessments, developing processes, people and organization changes, policies, roles and responsibilities in SAM, what is a business case, the different elements in a business case, how to use the business case to obtain commitment, and then identifying the generic roles in SAM and explain the different types. And finally, define or explain how to organize for SAM and further explain the roles and responsibilities. So in a nutshell, section three is about ISO, process tiers, concepts of processes, metrics, change and change management, policies, roles, and the business case. We begin with the IT asset management standard from ISO, and that is ISO 19770. In the ITEM Foundation course, we provided some information about the standard, along with information of the ISO 55000, which is the asset management standard. It's a best practice, which establishes a baseline for an integrated set of processes for IT asset management, divided into tiers to allow for implementing them and achieving recognition. It's got tier one, tier two, and tier three. Here we have the complete family of ISO. 19770. These are under the title software asset management rather than IT asset management in 19770, which has uh, several parts. Part one is the management system requirements. Part two, software identification tag. Part three, software entitlement tag. Part five, overview and vocabulary. Part eight, guiding, mapping industry practices with 19770, the guidelines for those things. And uh, in future, we can expect the following as well, part four, six, seven, 11, and 22. So part one is a process framework to enable an organization to prove that it is performing item to a standard sufficient to satisfy corporate governance requirements and ensure effective support for IT service management as well overall. Part two, it's a data standard for the software identification tags. For example, it can include version number and so on. Part three is the software entitlement tag, which basically uh, encapsulates details of software entitlements, meaning the, the usage rights, limitations, and certain metrics about the usage as well. The label for entitlement is ENT. The label for the identification of software is SWID. Those are standard terms in the industry as well. Then we have uh, part five, overview and vocabulary, which is um, yeah, just the basics uh, of the ISO, what it is about. And then part eight is uh, providing guidance on mapping industry practices um, to and from ISO 19770. Speaking about this, um, so you can read this on this slide. Continue now. There are various asset types under 197701. IT asset, within that we have digital assets, we have IT hardware, we have IT asset licenses, we have IT asset contracts, then we have IT asset services. Then we have on the left bottom, we have item system management. Within that, we have the 
item systems and tools, and we have the metadata for IT asset management, meaning pointers to other data. Which means there are different categories of IT assets. Digital assets include, as we can see in the upper left bigger box, executable software source code, non-executable software such as fonts, configuration information. Then we got content, digital content assets such as documents, audio, video, graphics, databases, etc. And then we also have virtual IT equipment such as firmware, virtual machines, embedded software, and so on, which are not really hardware. At the bottom left, we have the IT item system management, which includes the systems and tools used in item, as well as certain key data or pointer data to other data, which is known as metadata for IT asset management. It's mainly the information about IT assets and about also non-IT assets, which are also needed in some cases for managing IT assets. Then IT hardware is at the top right, which can include physical media, such as a backup, and other digital media. Then we have physical IT equipment, uh, servers, end user devices, et cetera. Then we also have IT assets, uh, which are the actual licenses, proof of license documentation that is. Then we have the contracts also another type of IT asset. Then we have services also an IT asset. For example, uh, if an organization goes to a cloud vendor for software services, then um, those software services become an IT asset. Then maintenance, um, training, et cetera, also can become IT assets. There are some non-IT assets at the extreme right in the column there, written vertically, for example, personal and organizational uh, needed for uh, the use and management of IT assets. <clears throat> 